One of the biggest challenges with virtual reality is enabling comfortable natural locomotion without causing issues like motion sickness while also ensuring accessibility for all users. Traditional VR locomotion techniques have limitations. For example, using controllers for continuous movement can cause disorientation or discomfort or motion sickness. And on the other hand, techniques like teleportation lack the ability to enable true fluid movement. And finally, methods like arm swinging require enough physical space and mobility that may not always be available. This is especially problematic for making virtual reality accessible in domains like healthcare rehabilitation, where seated VR experiences are important to include users with mobility impairments. To address these challenges, our research developed and evaluated two novel hybrid locomotion techniques that combine first-person and third-person perspectives to enable continuous free movement in VR while being seated. We call these two techniques the static hybrid camera and the dynamic hybrid camera. A key design goal of both techniques was to enable the user to explore and freely move throughout the virtual environment in an intuitive manner from the third person perspective, while still allowing them to quickly stop, look around, interact with objects and react to, to events from an embodied first person perspective, all while remaining seated. For both techniques, movement is controlled using traditional gamepad sticks and users can switch between the first-person view and third-person view at the press of a button at any time. Next up, let me show you what these techniques actually look like. So, static hybrid camera presents a third-person view from predetermined camera positions, and the view transitions to a new camera position when the avatar reaches predefined trigger areas. Users can switch from third-person to first-person view and vice versa at any time and to support orientation an arrow overlay points to the avatar when it is out of view. Implementation-wise, the static hybrid camera approach required very careful design of the virtual environments and strategic placement of those predetermined third-person camera viewpoints. Factors like the layout of rooms, positioning of doorways and hallways, and potential lines of sight all had to be considered in the level design. Ideally, uh, we wanted a single well-positioned camera angle to cover an entire room without the need for transitioning to additional angles. But for complex rooms, we had to implement multiple angles. A major challenge was making the transitions between these angles as smooth and reorienting as possible and we utilized techniques like automatically rotating the user's view to face the direction of their avatar after a camera transition to reground them. In dynamic hybrid camera, the entire virtual environment is only fully visible while standing still. During motion, um, large parts of the environment, except a small cutout surrounding the avatar, are replaced by an independent visual background overlay. A dynamic growing animation is shown on transition to reorient the user and the third person view follows the user's avatar during motion. And once again, users can switch from third person to first person view and vice versa at any time. For the dynamic hybrid camera, a major focus was on preventing potential motion sickness caused by moving through the virtual world in that miniaturized third-person perspective. And our key technique here was to fade out the full 3D environment, except for a small radius of space around the user's avatar that remained visible. This local area provides a stable, unmoving anchor point for the user's vision in the periphery, and this has been shown to significantly reduce motion sickness from conflicting visual motion signals. We invested a lot of iteration into tuning parameters like the speed and rotation of the transition between first and third person views and also the size and opacity of this local visible window around the avatar 
because too small and it wouldn't provide enough visual context and too large and it could induce motion sickness. To evaluate our locomotion prototypes, we conducted a user study with 12 participants. We had three different trial environments, a basic obstacle course, an indoor building environment and an outdoor terrain environment. And each participant tried all three locomotion techniques, static hybrid camera, dynamic hybrid camera and traditional teleportation locomotion as a baseline condition across all three environments. So it was a within subject design. We measured several quantitative metrics, including completion times and number of times hit by obstacles. We also measured the sense of presence and simulate the sickness scores with questionnaires. And we also captured subjective ratings from users on aspects like their favorite and least favorite technique, perceived competency, sense of immersion and preference for navigation. We also recorded observations of participant behavior and first-hand feedback about their experience with each technique for qualitative analysis. From the quantitative data, we found that both the static and dynamic hybrid camera techniques enabled significantly faster completion times compared to teleportation in the basic obstacle course. There were no statistically significant differences in the presence or simulated sickness levels reported by users based on the standardized questionnaires. The subjective user preference ratings provided some insight into the different strengths and potential uses for each technique. Dynamic hybrid camera was rated best for navigation, likely because of the fully movable third-person camera perspective that could be rot rotated and gave fuller awareness akin to traditional third-person 3D games, and teleportation was considered the most immersive approach by participants. When it came to being rated as the overall favorite technique, ratings were quite divided between all three methods, suggesting there was no clear universal winner. Static camera got a slight edge being rated as the favorite by five of the 12 participants. So the qualitative observations and feedback show that for both techniques, the ability to naturally move, turn, jump and to fluidly switch between first person and third person views were seen as major advantages, especially the ability to jump was greatly appreciated and intensely used by our participants. And static hybrid camera was described as immersive, but participants were sometimes confused by the fixed viewpoints and jarring transitions between them, especially when camera angles changed in large degrees. And some participants also had trouble adjusting their movement directions after camera changes. The dynamic camera did seem to trigger initial experiences of motion sickness for some participants, though this subsided over time or with, with different environments. Um, participants appreciated the flexibility of the adjustable third-person camera and the fami familiarity of the controls, but felt the constantly moving perspective could be disorientating, especially when combined with the limited environmental visibility to reduce motion sickness. Participants also mentioned a lack of immersion due to the independent visual background and provided numerous suggestions on, on how that could be improved. So, in conclusion, this paper presents two novel virtual reality locomotion techniques optimized for use in a seated position that enable traversal around any given scene in a third-person perspective with the ability to switch to first-person perspective at any time. The study demonstrates that these hybrid techniques successfully expand locomotion options in VR, improving accessibility and comfort, especially for seated users, in the domain of healthcare and beyond. However, there are still plenty of opportunities to refine and improve on these fundamental concepts through further iteration on the transitional effects, UI affordances and alternative visual techniques for the independent visual background. And we think user testing across a wider range of settings, scenarios and accessibility requirements would also be highly valuable to expand on these findings and shape future developments of hybridized VR locomotion controls.